So I got a laser. And I know what you're probably thinking, why would you want a laser as a furniture refinisher or a restorer, or maybe even somebody who has a hobby for woodworking? And I'm going to answer that question in this video, along with a few other uses. So stick around. To start, I want to give you a few details about the laser. I'm using the Autor Laser Master 3, which was recently released as of making this video. And I was pleasantly surprised with the quality of the build of this laser because, well, I've never used one before. So if you're thinking, I could never figure this out, it isn't as complicated as it seems. Let's start with assembly. It was pretty easy to assemble, and it comes disassembled in a very nicely packed box. But they have a video on the website that shows you just how to assemble it from start to finish and it was pretty easy to put together, so I'm not going to get into that. Safety is pretty important when it comes to using something like a high-powered laser, and the Otor Master 3 comes with a key that locks the laser to prevent unauthorized people from using it. It also has an emergency stop button, a laser beam safety guard, and it comes with a pair of laser safety glasses that are required for using such a high-powered laser. In order to cut or engrave anything on the laser, you're required to download and use a secondary software. Now, if you have a PC, you can use Laser Gerbil or Gerbil or whatever that word is, or Lightburn. They also have a mobile-based application called Laser Explorer, which allows you to use the laser with your mobile device. It's a really cool feature because if you're in your garage and working and don't want to connect your laser to your PC for use, then you can just connect it to your mobile phone and use it that way. The app connection uses a wireless connection, so when you're setting it up, it takes you through connecting the laser to your wireless using your phone. Once the laser is connected, you can set it up and run a job on the app using the built-in text function or the image library. It also allows you to select images from your phone, which brings me to one of the first uses and most common sense uses for this laser, which is engraving. Now, for this example, I'm going to use some three millimeter basswood or basswood, I'm not really sure. And I've created a logo that I want to engrave using a program called Canva, which I'll link below. The program allows me to do things like make adjustments to the speed and the laser power. All of these settings are going to vary depending upon what you're trying to do. The good thing about when you're trying to engrave is that if it's too light, you can just add another pass to the program and the laser will go over the same area again as long as you haven't moved the project. Just like if you're using a printer, the higher quality of the image, the better the laser will be at engraving it. So keep that in mind when you're choosing images to engrave. This particular image was one that I was testing out as a logo for furniture that I've refinished. I can easily engrave this image on smaller pre-cut pieces of hobby board and then glue it to a piece of furniture. Another really good use for furniture refinishers or restorers or creators is to make branded items that you can give away to your customers. I chose to make coasters. I just engraved the top with a pattern and then I sealed them in epoxy resin. You could add a branded logo to the underside very easily just by flipping it over and then engraving both sides of the piece.
When you're engraving things like wood, you have the ability to add color before you engrave it. And then you can create more contrast with that engraved area. You can also paint after and then sand down the non-engraved area to create a different look. I use some steel wool and vinegar solution with gold spray paint and it created an interesting color contrast. These smaller coasters can be used on a larger scale as well. Just imagine making wooden engraved tiles for a coffee table or a side table. There are a ton of possibilities. Another consideration would be to use the laser to cut repeatable veneer patterns. One of the most difficult shapes to get perfect in cutting any wood is a circle. This laser can cut the circle shape for you and you can make it over and over again in the exact same size. So following that idea of tiling, you could create a pattern of veneer tiles as well. I have a set of mid-century modern side tables that I intend to refinish at some point. They have four panels on the front and using the same concept of engraving and cutting veneer, you can see where adding these to the four empty panels on the front would create a lot more visual interest. One of the final very simple ideas I want to share with you is that you can cut out wooden appliques using a laser. It takes several passes, but now you can have repeatable shapes that you can fasten to a piece of furniture or whatever you're working on. I hope this video got your gears turning and if you're interested in purchasing the laser or adding it to your wish list, the link will be in the description below. I do intend on using this laser on some of my upcoming projects. I think it's going to end up being a really useful tool to make some really cool and unique furniture pieces. If you want more content, please check out the video on the screen and thanks for watching.